but in 2020, I, w I left Hong Kong because the newly implemented uh, national security law and I'm now wanted a fugitive uh, from the Hong Kong government. I'm Nathan, uh, I'm a Hong Kong activist. I was a student leader in the Embraer movement in 2014 and I, I was elected as the youngest uh, ever legislator in Hong Kong at the age of 23 in 2016. But subsequently I was uh, kicked out basically uh, from the council by the Chinese government and I was jailed subsequently. The national security law is a completely different um, set of laws or concept of law and um, it had not been through any local consultation or legislation process and it is written in such a fake term that well basically they could cook up cases and they could interpret uh, the terms inside it in order to create any legal weapon that they could target uh, political activists in Hong Kong. So um, on the first, very first day of its imp implementation, 1st of July, there were cases that uh, people were just in possession of the uh, flags or stickers that have the protest slogan on. They were arrested and there were cases that uh, some of the young activist students, they were allegedly um, well uh, related to a Facebook post that um, encouraged uh, independence and they were all arrested. The government says that the law targets violent protesters, but in fact, it targets the freedom of expression and freedom of political thoughts. There is a sense of white terror and politics of fear on the ground because we all don't know how the government will abuse uh, the, the, the national security law arbitrarily. I think we've all read um, uh, the, the, the novel from, from um, George Orwell, 1984, that, that, that was a totalitarian state that full of surveillance. But for now, the surveillance technology is even more mature and all-rounded compared to that era. And uh, they have been abusing that as a tool of suppression. Uh, the, the, the most vivid um, example would be in Xinjiang, that they have um, millions of surveillance camera in the city and they have facial recognition, um, they, they, they have access to all sorts of your personal information including how much gas you have spent, how much water you have used and then to assess your life pattern based on that and then to complete their um, all-rounded surveillance on every individual. So I think um, that is a scary case and Hong Kong is not up to that, that level yet, but we are still very worried that we will follow that path. It's important that we pr protect our personal information. It's, it's not about whether you uh, can hide things, it's about they, uh, this information will expose your uh, friends network what you like and your preferences or even sensitive parts of your life and this can be manipulated by the government they could create a lot of like scandals pseudo information false information in cooperation with uh, their state propaganda and they could use it to stigmatize you or force you to work for them or even threaten they will harm your loved ones so i myself have to take um, safety measures even though i'm not in hong kong um, I'm not an expert on like <laughs> cyber security, but I uh, will always use two-step, always use VPN. So I'm, I'm actually using Proton VPN and Proton Mail. There are technical stuff, but there are also mentality and a way of getting used to these um, technologies and, and new ways of interacting with the internet. The fight for Hong Kong is not only for Hong Kong people, but for democracy and democratic values as a whole. So for me, it's a battle that for democracies and democratic values, we have to preserve them and we have to act in Hong Kong and to protect this uh, particular place.